Cavalry 2.4 drops with helpful new features, Adobe announces its new Creative Cloud plans, and Google shocks the internet with its updated AI video tool, VO3. It's Motion Mondays, and man, do I miss the days where we could just laugh at AI. Remember that old AI Will Smith spaghetti video? Uncle Phil, come try this. Yeah, about that. Cavalry launched version 2.4 and they got a ton of really helpful features. The release notes go on forever and this is the one thing Cavalry users love. The team ships constantly and isn't afraid to add features for specific use cases because they're trying to make Cavalry the Houdini of 2D. Now highlights include a dependency graph for visualizing connections in your compositions, which gets super helpful as projects get more complex. They also added mesh maps for creating animated meshes on raster images, plus an SLA shader. There's also a new particle system that's in beta, an auto animate for animating shapes and tapered strokes along shapes. Cavalry now supports background rendering too, which is super great. Now you can add a camera to a scene to create 2.5D animations, and they've got all these dynamic elements that help you generate an animate type super easily. And their use of a pug in a feature example totally sold me. That little pug demo showing the 2D meshes they form is super fun. By the way, if you're interested in Cavalry, stay tuned because we got a course cooking up. So be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to know when it launches. Now Epic's been teasing Unreal Engine 5.6 for quite a while and they just launched the preview version available for download now. And one of the big things, at least for motion designers, is that they updated and revamped their entire animation system. And Epic says it's the largest expansion of the engine's animation authoring tool set, which is super promising. And a lot of people are saying that it's actually good enough now that it's feasible to do types of rigs and animations entirely in engine versus animating stuff inside of Blender or Maya as people typically would. Now there are tutorials showing all the different ways you can animate things. There's things like FFD controllers and stuff, which is super interesting. And in addition, one of the other big announcements was the MetaHuman Creator is now available in engine, which is a pretty big deal. But something relevant for motion designers, our man Winbush came out with a video showing some of the MoGraph motion tools updates in 5.6. And this includes a really cool feature that allows you the ability to import Photoshop files directly into Photoshop Engine. And this is really cool. And what's even better is Wimbush is gonna be covering this and much more in his brand new Unreal Engine for Broadcast Designers course that we're currently making right now. So be sure to subscribe so you know what up, what up, when it launches. All right, now here at School of Motion, our all access has officially launched. I highly recommend you go check it out. There's a ton of cool stuff happening. We're coming out with a bunch of new courses like the Cavalry and Unreal Engine courses I just mentioned. Plus I'm currently working on a Substance Painter course, which I'm super excited about. And we got our second Rive course that Joey is currently hard at work on. So a lot of exciting stuff. We have over a thousand students in there right now. The vibes are off the chart in our community. And we have some pretty cool guest speakers that are gonna be joining monthly. So be sure to head on over to schoolmotion.com to learn about all that comes in all access. Last week, Adobe announced they're coming out with new Creative Cloud plans and pricing. The Creative Cloud All Plans app is now called Creative Cloud Pro and includes all of their AI tools, gives you 4,000 monthly credits for premium generative features like text to video, and has unlimited credits for generative features like generative fill. It also includes the all new Firefly app and access to mobile apps. So it used to be about $59 a month, and now that plan is $69 a month. And be warned, you're gonna automatically be opted into this higher price. So if you don't want Creative Cloud Pro, you're gonna have to manually opt out. Now there is a cheaper Creative Cloud standard plan at $54.99, which is actually $5 cheaper than the current pricing, but you only get 25 generative AI credits instead of the 500 you currently get. And you also get limited access to mobile apps. This all takes place and changes on June 17th, so be aware. Now on the 3D side of things, Maxon announced that they're discontinuing ZBrush Core and ZBrush Core Mini the free versions of the ZBrush desktop app. Now, when I first started learning ZBrush, I actually picked up the ZBrush Core Mini because the UI was way more streamlined and way more accessible than when you open up the desktop version and you just saw all the buttons everywhere and just you didn't know what the heck to do. 
Now, the interesting thing here isn't necessarily that they're discontinuing these versions, but that they're planning a new freemium version for ZBrush for desktop that's gonna be on par with the free iPad version that they currently have. So the iPad version has limited functionality, but is way beefier than what the ZBrush core app was. So be really interested to see what they do with this. And I'd also be interested to see if they do this whole freemium thing with Cinema 4D someday. Think about a free version that's way beefier than what's in Cinema 4D Lite. And I think it's kind of a good move with most of Cinema 4D's competition being free these days. It makes sense to offer a free version of your software to demonstrate its value. After all, I've always said that while software might be free, people's time is not. Now on to great work from across the interwebs this last week. Our own Aaron Rubinowitz shared the opening credits for Duster, a new J.J. Abrams show on HBO. And it is actually really cool. It gives off these like Hot Wheels style toy vibes with like tilt shift and epic car chases. And I'm really loving the shallow depth of field and how it just looks like you caught some toys racing along a track. And it really brings me back to the days where I just sit around and play with toy cars all day. Ah, 2023 was a great year. Next up is Two Fresh Creative out of LA, and they dropped a brand new reel after two years of not putting out a reel. Now, for anyone unfamiliar, they do amazing sports-style graphics for Fox, ESPN, they work for CNN, and a lot more. And they've got all the traditional super sleek sports logos and slick 3D graphics stuff, but they also have a lot of really cool stylized work as well. And as someone who kind of cut their teeth in the industry on sports graphics, this is super inspiring stuff. I've been a huge fan of Too Fresh for a long time. And the more I watch, the more I realize how much work I've seen on TV that I didn't even know that they did. So congrats to the team over there for putting out their brand new reel. And finally, Google released this minute and a half animation that is all about its new AI search that is all animated UIs. And you might think that that's pretty boring, but there's so much great design and animation and eye trace that it actually stays very visually interesting throughout. And it's kind of reminds me of that old Apple animation that was just the white background with all the dots and lines connecting, but it's kind of like this, but on dark mode and all that nice kind of smeary blurred gradients. Now sticking with Google, they announced an update to their AI video model called Vio, now in version three, and it's actually pretty crazy what it could do. The visuals look really high quality and realistic, but the big thing is that it can generate video with automatic sound effects, ambient noise, and dialogue. Now they have a bunch of crazy examples, but this one of like a captain, you got the water sounds in the background, you have voice sync to the, the lip movements. This ocean, it's a force, a wild, untamed might. And she commands your awe with every breaking light. Guys, all this deep fake stuff's gonna be so much fun. I feel like I'm really having that Sora panic attack moment all over again. Deep breath. So they also came out with Flow, which is a new AI platform that lets you create scenes using natural language and provides tools for consistent characters, scenes, and styles. And one of the examples was, was pretty nuts. It's a stand-up comedian that landed a joke that's better than 99% of my jokes. And I feel personally attacked by AI now. So I went to the zoo the other day and all they had was one dog. It was a Shih Tzu. <laughs> Now onto a more kind of under the radar announcement from Google I.O., but it's their tool called Stitch, which is basically AI for UI. And using it, you can generate UI elements, tweak and adjust colors and design schemes. And the great part is, is that you can actually export static HTML code or export designs directly into Figma. Now, I would envision you using this kind of like how you use AI for writing. You use it to get a base draft framework generated just to destroy that blank page. And then you just kind of refine from there. And the best part is that it's available for free. So it's never been easier to create UI for a job app that doesn't have any jobs on it because AI. Now onto this week's School of Motion student of the week. And that is Landon Peterson from Austin, Texas, who is currently taking character animation boot camp alongside TA Jeremy Reck. He's a freelance editor animator who's been freelance for about 12 years and has been focusing on animation skills for the last four to five years thanks to School of Motion. Landon took almost all of our other animation classes and now he's tackling character animation. And it's really cool because you can see all those animation skills translate really well. The animation piece really demonstrates really expressive movements where you can 
You can feel the frustration at the moment there and the flow of the body is great. Nice job, Landon. Can't wait to see more work from you. Next up, we have Rive that announced some pretty big news that they're integrating Model Context Protocol or MCP into the early access version of their Mac desktop app. Now, don't confuse MCP with ICP, completely different things. But basically, MCP is a universal connector that allows AI tools to seamlessly work within apps and data sources. So that sounds a little bit nerdy, but for Rive specifically, this integration enables AI tools to handle repetitive tasks like creating complex view models, state machines, layouts, and shapes. So in an example, you can see text prompts using AI agents that create whole layouts automatically. And it's kind of like how Photoshop has that plugin where you can have ChatGPT or Claude talk directly to Photoshop and have it rename layers for you and, and stuff like that automatically. And that's kind of the integration that Rive has added here. And it's pretty exciting stuff. And I would say it's never been a better time to dive into Rive. So be sure to check out our first Rive course to help whet your appetite before Joey's finished on the second one. You can find more details to the Rive course on our website at schoolmotion.com. Okay, time for our obligatory Blender add-on segment sponsored by the Did You Know It's Free Foundation for the free arts that are free. This week, we are sharing this realistic skin add-on for Blender called Human Pro that's pretty incredible. It has customization filters for head detail, skin detail, face wrinkles, forehead wrinkles, Bags under your eyes from doom scrolling all the Google VO3 content and at 8K resolution, you'll definitely see everything. The one catch is, is that it requires diffeomorphic Daz Studio along with both Daz Studio and the Daz library installed. So you need those things to run this add on, but the customization options look super realistic and super incredible. You'll find the link to that in the description below. And finally, we got something for people who are into subsurface scattering and want to go even deeper than surface level into the topic. Scott Benson has created an amazing deep dive into subsurface scattering in Octane Render. It includes a collection of material samples and a PDF guide for all your subsurface scattering nerding out needs. Check out Scott's Behance page to absorb all the subsurface scattering knowledge as well as a bunch of other Octane guides that he's done deep dives on as well. Links are in the description. And that's a wrap for this week's episode. As always, links to everything we talked about are in the description below. And be sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons if you're enjoying all of this fine, fine motion news content. And be sure to head on over to our website to learn more about our brand spanking new all access platform and all the courses that we're coming out with. And until next time, hope you have a great Monday.